We've learned a lot about solutions. We know that you can mix a solute, something that's dissolved, with a solvent, something that does the dissolving, and get a solution. Now, it turns out not everything you mix together will make a solution. For example, you might have mixed oil and water and noticed that they separate. Or you might have taken a look at salad dressing and noticed that it often separates out into two separate layers. So some things can make solutions and some can't. What determines that? In this lesson, we'll figure that out. Let's start with something that does make a nice solution, like vinegar. So here we have a solution of vinegar, which turns out to be acetic acid and water. And if I take a look at that solution, we'll notice that it looks the same everywhere. Okay, that's important because acetic acid and water are what we call miscible. That means they mix together, and when they mix together, they form a homogeneous solution. Remember, we talked about what homogeneous meant in a previous lesson, and it means the same everywhere. Okay, so notice if I look at any of these three circles I've drawn, that solution looks the same in every spot. So acetic acid and water make a nice solution when they mix together. They're miscible. So miscible is a fancy word that means it mixes together and it looks the same everywhere. Let's talk about how the structure of acetic acid and water explain that. What we're going to learn in this video is that if you want to make something that's miscible, if you want them to dissolve, they need to be similar to each other. And we summarize that with the statement, like dissolves like. Okay, so how are water and acetic acid alike? Well, remember that water is polar. That means it has an unequal distribution of charge. And in particular, oxygen has a negative charge, while hydrogen has a positive charge. Remember, these weird little curly Q things I'm drawing are the Greek letter delta. And they mean that it's partially negative or partially positive. So it's not all the way to negative one for oxygen, it's just a little negative. And it's not all the way to positive one for hydrogen, it's just a little positive. Well, when I look at acetic acid, which is the structure on the right, it also has these partial charges everywhere. This oxygen is partially negative, and that carbon is partially positive. And then right here we see an OH. Now, here's a key that's really important for this topic. If you ever see an OH on a covalent compound, and remember, a covalent compound is one that's all non-metals. You have a polar molecule. So all you need to see is that OH. And the second you see that OH, you don't need to ask anything else. You know it's polar, okay? And so we're going to know now then that acetic acid is polar. And that OH is similarly charged, just like we saw the other oxygen and carbon charged, where oxygen and hydrogen have partial charges. Hydrogen's partially positive and oxygen's partially negative. And when we combine those things together, they make a nice homogeneous solution. Why is that? Well, think about how they're going to align. Water has positive charges and negative charges. So it's actually going to want to align with acetic acid, and it's going to want to put its positively charged hydrogens right next to the negatively charged oxygens of acetic acid. And so this means they like to stack up near each other. And when they stack up near each other, there's this force holding them together, right? In fact, that's called a hydrogen bond right there. It's an intermolecular force holding those two polar things together. And so, since they like to be together, because they're both polar, they form a nice homogeneous solution. They dissolve to form a miscible homogeneous solution. Okay, let's look at an example where we don't get a nice solution. Oil and water. We call that immiscible. Immiscible. That means the two substances don't form a homogeneous solution. Remember that homogeneous means the same throughout. And now if I look at the top of this solution, I see oil. If I look in the middle, I see a mixture of oil and water where they're kind of stacked on top of each other. And if I look at the bottom, I see only water. So this is not homogeneous. The opposite of homogeneous is heterogeneous. So another way we could put it is immiscible substances are those that form a heterogeneous mixture. So they're not making a nice solution. Now, why is that? Well, it has to do with our like dissolves like rule. And water, we saw in the last video, is polar. So water down here is polar. Oil turns out to be made of carbon and hydrogen. So I don't have the structure drawn here because it's pretty big and complicated. But oil is made of mostly carbon and hydrogen. And if things are just made of carbon and hydrogen, it's a good rule to remember that they're non-polar. So remember, if you see OH, we know it's polar. If you see just carbon and just hydrogen, we know it's non-polar. And so that oil up there is going to be non-polar. And now, if you imagine the interaction those are going to have, Water would rather hang out with other charged water molecules where it can balance those out and they can have hydrogen bonding. If a water tries to creep up here, it's not going to have anything to hydrogen bond to. 
and that's gonna make it less stable. And so they end up separating out. Okay, so oil and water are immiscible. Now let's take a closer look at thinking about all the different options we could have when we mix a solvent and a solute. Let me explain this chart for a second. We're gonna go through the rule, like dissolves like. By considering a bunch of solvents that are polar or nonpolar, and we're gonna mix those with solutes. That's something that's dissolved in our solution. And we're gonna ask in each case, is that gonna make a miscable solution or an immiscable solution? Okay, let's do that. Well, let's start with a polar solvent and a polar solute. We actually already looked at an example like that. Remember, in the acetic acid and water situation, we had a polar solvent, which was water, and we had a polar solute, which was acetic acid, and we saw that they were miscible. So whenever I combine two things that are like that, we get something that is miscible. So I'll put misc for miscable. Now we go to a nonpolar solute mixing with a polar solvent. What's gonna happen there? Well, that's just like oil and water, and that's gonna be immiscible. It's not gonna make a nice solution. Okay? All right, now something a little new, ionic. So if we try to mix something that's ionic into our polar solvent, what's gonna happen? Well, there we need to remember what ionic compounds are. Ionic compounds are any time that we have a metal and a non-metal combined. So let's say you have MgCl2. Okay, well, this magnesium here turns out to be a metal, and the chlorine here turns out to be a non-metal. All right, why is that important? Well, remember, when those two things combine, a metal and a non-metal combine, we get something that's positively charged, so our magnesium turns out to be positive, and our chlorine's negative. Now, remember, polar solvents are charged, and so they're gonna really like to be around these ionic compounds, which are also charged. In fact, it's almost like ionic compounds are super polar, right? They don't just have partially positive charge, they have all the way to positive one or minus one. And so those also make a nice miscible solution. Okay, let's think about what that looks like, again, at the molecular level. Here we have a picture of an ionic compound being dissolved by water. So here's our nice beaker of water. And then in the red and white spheres, we have our water molecules represented. Just like we saw before, we have our oxygen negatively charged. So remember, the red spheres are oxygen and the white spheres are hydrogen. The white spheres are positively charged and the red spheres are negatively charged. And so now what's gonna happen is that ionic compound is actually gonna fall apart. So here's my ionic compound. Notice all the ions. And it's gonna fall apart and hang out in the middle of a bunch of water. So here's where the negative ion is falling, hanging out. Notice it has the positively charged hydrogens all pointed in towards that negatively charged ion. And so now it counterbalances that charge and it's, like hanging out with another water molecule for the water, it's stabilized by that negative charge. And then if we look up at what's happening to our cation, our positively charged thing, we see that all the negatively charged oxygens are pointing towards that positively charged ion. So what happens here is because ionic compounds are charged and the water molecules have charges, they like to hang out together and they make a miscible solution. Okay, let's return to our table. Here we've already seen that a polar plus a polar makes miscible. Polar plus nonpolar makes it immiscible. An ionic solute and a polar solvent, once again, makes miscible. Okay, what about if we have a nonpolar solvent? Pretty similar discussion here. Nonpolar plus polar, those aren't the same. Those are different. And so that's gonna make it immiscible. All right, nonpolar plus nonpolar. So that would be like mixing gasoline, which is nonpolar, and oil, which is nonpolar. Well, because neither of them have charges, those actually are miscible. So two nonpolar things are gonna make a nice homogeneous solution. Now, what about if I try to mix nonpolar solvents with an ionic solute? That won't make a nice solution because ionic compounds are charged and my nonpolar solvents are not charged. So they're not gonna to wanna to interact and so they don't dissolve. So ionic compounds don't dissolve and don't make nice solutions. They're not miscible in my polar solvent. Okay, so that's a summary of our like dissolves like rule. Let's practice a few times. This problem says predict whether each of the following substances This problem says predict whether each of the following substances would be more soluble in water, which it tells us, hey, that's a polar solvent, or in a hydrocarbon, something with just hydrogen and carbon, which is a nonpolar solvent. So notice here C7H16, all carbon, all hydrogen, and it goes ahead and tells us, yeah, that's nonpolar, but we would have already known that from our rule. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take a look at different things I'm gonna try to mix with it. Vegetable oil, which is nonpolar. Would I rather mix it with C7H16, which is also nonpolar, or 
with water, which we know is polar. Well, clearly we'd rather mix it with the nonpolar thing. So it's gonna be more soluble with heptane or C7H16. Those are the same things. Heptane is a pretty big carbon molecule. Okay, what about isopropyl alcohol? That one is polar, so it's gonna mix better with our polar solvent, which is water. Okay, now potassium bromide. Now we're to an ionic compound. Would an ionic compound, which has really big charges, be more stable with a polar compound, which has some charges, or a nonpolar compound, which has no charges? Well, there it's gonna plainly be more stable, again, with my polar solvent, H2O. Okay, let's do one more practice problem. Here, we're asked to indicate if the following combinations would be miscible or immiscible. And so what we're gonna do is identify each one of our compounds in this problem as polar, nonpolar, or ionic. And then we're gonna remember that like dissolves like. I have a few tips, tips that we've talked about throughout this video down there, like OH indicates hydrogen bonding, which means it's polar, just carbon and hydrogen is nonpolar, and metals and nonmetals make an ionic compound. Let's look at chlorine and bromine. Chlorine is two chlorine atoms bonded to each other. Those are the same atom in Cl2, right? Just two chlorines. So they're not gonna have a difference in electronegativity that you're gonna need to be polar. And so just chlorine by itself is gonna be nonpolar. And that's always true. Whenever you have something that's just made of one atom type, it's nonpolar. So you could add that to your tips if you wanted. Bromine, similarly, made of all bromine, it's gonna be nonpolar. Okay, are those similar or dissimilar? Those are clearly similar. So since they're similar, they're like each other, they're gonna make a nice miscible solution. All right, let's look at C4H12 and H2O. Remember that C4H12 is all carbon and hydrogen, and so that means it's gonna be nonpolar. Don't freak out and think you need to draw this to know what it looks like. Because carbon and hydrogen don't have a big enough electronegativity difference to give you a polar bond, it's nonpolar. Water, similarly, we hopefully know by now, is just polar. It's a really common, really important example of a polar solvent. So this is polar. Okay, now when I try to mix two things, I try to mix a nonpolar and a polar thing. Is that gonna mix? No, they're not the same. So it's gonna be immiscible. All right, let's look at C6H12 and CH4. Both of those are just a bunch of carbon and hydrogen. So both of those are gonna be nonpolar and nonpolar. Now, are those the similar? They are similar. And so that means they're gonna be miscible. Okay, two more examples. CH3OH and H2O. Remember our tip. When you see OH, you know that's hydrogen bonding that's happening there, and that means it's polar. So this is gonna be polar and polar. Okay, two polar things. Is that gonna be miscible? Absolutely. So that makes it miscible. Okay, lastly, H2O and MgCl2. Water, still polar. And then MgCl2, that's actually ionic. How do you recognize those? Well, they're gonna start with a metal. So they're gonna start with one of our elements from our periodic table that's a metal. So if you ever see something and you're not sure if it's ionic or not, you wanna to go to that periodic table and see is it made of a metal and a non-metal. Okay, polar and ionic, are those similar? Yes, they're both charged. They're both charged. And so that means those are miscible. Okay, that's thinking about what substances will make nice solutions. Bottom line, they have to be similar. If they both are nonpolar, they make a nice solution. If they're both polar, they make a nice solution. If they're both charged, as in one's polar and one's ionic, they make a nice solution. Hey, hey.